Hello and welcome back to Incom Solutions. So today we're going to be talking about the GoTenna Pro X2. This is their latest version of the GoTenna devices, the little mesh devices. Um, I have never owned one. Uh, earlier reviews of some of their earlier versions uh, were kind of lackluster, you know, versus the price point. We will kind of compare, uh, do definitely the cost comparisons between uh, what something like this commercially available costs versus what a mesh tastic device might or LoRa mesh radio device would cost you to get set up and using. Um, but yeah, one of the tools I want to present you with here today is is one that you should if you are in this marketplace and you're looking for uh, new radios, new technology to improve your comms plan. Um, you can use if the manufacturer is providing a FCC ID number um, you can look that up and get a lot of data from there and we'll go over that here later in the video on the GoTenna um, because sometimes the websites or uh, again the information is just you know not exactly what you're looking for because it's designed to be marketed to a broader audience that may not really care about you know what frequency modulation they're using or how many watts or what frequencies are assigned for this device that type of thing so you could get a better understanding of how it's working uh, so that tool is a great tool if you're not i will provide a link for a source that i'm using it's not directly associated with the fcc but it pulls all that data and it's a little easier to get to because if anybody that's been on the fcc's website knows that to uh, it can be confusing to try to find things on there. So <laughs> so let's get started and take a look at this new device. All right, so we jumped over to GoTennaPro.com. Here's their Pro under products. You're going to find the Pro X2 Enhanced Performance Low Profile, the world's smallest, lightest, most cost-effective mesh network device for tactical operations. That's their claim, not mine. Uh, made in the U.S., which is great. Uh, so you can see here, obviously, you know, with the, uh, the Android device with, you know, a hardened case, the whole ATAC, they're definitely marketing towards like the more military law enforcement types. Uh, so we'll get into some of the key benefits. We'll jump over the spec sheet because you see here there's a spec sheet that's uh, on their website. It's a really pretty good spec sheet that gives you a lot of information. They've done testing uh, at over 100 miles point to point while using aerial relay. It's lightweight, about 100 grams. Discreet, proven uh, to be difficult to detect. Rapidly deployable, uh, ATAC compatible, advanced power management, long lasting uh, nine hours per standard mission, right? Which is pretty good. That's, you know, um, you know, any given day, that's not bad. Configurable antenna, you're gonna have the options of, um, be able to like hook it up to an external antenna like if you're in a vehicle or something like that it's scalable up to 60 nodes per network and it is secure with 256 bit encryption with the attack plugin and is ruggedized up to the mill standard of 810 compliant plant yeah yeah cool um so let's jump over the spec sheet spec sheet just kind of covers over, covers over a lot of the key benefits in a little more detail some of the range testing is pretty interesting because they've They've got some in here, like where they're ridgeline to ridgeline, 164 miles, 15 miles line of sight on standard body mounted configuration, which is pretty uh, uh, decent. Um, low profile. Yep, yep. That's all stuff we kind of already covered. These are the apps, like I, I think I mentioned earlier, the GoTenna Pro app or ATAC Android, obviously the Pro app. If you have an iOS device, that's the only one you're going to be able to use. You can't use ATAC on that. So here's where you're going to find the FCC ID for this device right here. And then you can use that to go search and learn more. GoTenna does provide most information most people will be looking for. But there's a lot of things I've found out there that have really vague you know, information on their website. So you're like, well, I want to know more without you know actually buying one and taking it apart or whatever. So um, 
when you get down into the transceiver in here, it's operating VHF in the MERS bands as the uh, earlier versions did. And now this one offers UHF frequencies that go through the GRMS FRS frequencies. So I'm kind of interested in how that works. If Once we get over the FCC uh, information, it's, it's saying part nine, which I'm not familiar with part nine. I was thinking part 90, but maybe that's a mistake on that site because we'll do more research. How about that? <laughs> and the modulation here, temperatures. Oh, it does have the IP68 10 meters. Okay, so I didn't see that earlier. I don't know why I didn't see that earlier, but it does have a waterproof rating of 10 meters for 30 minutes. Uh, battery life, as we already talked about, the SMA connector for the antenna. It's Bluetooth 5.0 and 4.0 plus with a micro USB. That sucks. I wish it was um, the uh, USB-C. That would be better. Here's a site that I tend to use. Let me go back to the main page here. Let's mess around with that. So this is FCC ID.io. So it is not the FCC's website. It's FCC information pulled to they're getting their source from there, but they make it a little easier to find and, you know, read through. Um, <clears throat> so in here, this is where it's going to break the frequencies down. So if you want to know more, that's where it's saying rules under part nine. Um, and then, you know, we're looking at a just shy of four watts for pretty much all the frequencies through the VHF and UHF. And then... Um, and then the obviously the 2.4 gigahertz for the Bluetooth. Here's one of the parts where, like I said, some people might find this interesting. User manual setup photos. Not actually, usually not that part's not the internal photos is where a lot of people might be interested in, like actually seeing what's what's it look like inside. You don't have to buy one and break it to figure out what's in there. You know, these photos are here. So just thought I'd throw that resource out there uh, for those that might be interested. So let's get. All right, so just to kind of wrap up, there's a lot of other partners they're working with. They're working with Hoverfly and some other stuff. You can find it on their website where the, the drone's doing testing, using basically making an aerial uh, or airborne relay setup. Um, <clears throat> so definitely they're pushing real hard to like really expand their, you know, their marketplace more into the, like I said, the kind of the governmental uh, sector it looks like. Let's talk cost because I could not find a cost. I did, you might have noticed that on the website, you know, contact sales rep, whatever. I, I sent an email because uh, of the time difference between me and here currently in Europe and versus the US. Hopefully they'll respond to the email and give me a quote. Um, I'm expecting they're gonna be more than the older versions, which were around 200 a set. Um, you can find some of the older versions on eBay that look like new in the box because maybe someone bought them and never used them um for like 150 um but they don't offer some of the features that these newer ones do uh so <clears throat> where if you were going to do cost comparison with a laura mesh mesh tastic device uh the closest thing i would do any sort of off-the-shelf comparison because I've, I've had this conversation with uh um, other viewers on other videos it would be the uh, T beams or not, excuse me, not T beams, the T echo, really go T echo because it is a off the shelf lower radio that pretty much you could just buy, charge it and hand it to somebody, you know, if they had the app and stuff on the phone, very similar to what you could do with one of these go tennis. And they're about 55 in the U S if you can find one right now, nowhere I've seen they're they're all out of stock. So, um, you can order direct from Lily go from their website and just, wait for them to ship from China and you know, when they become available, right? So, <clears throat> and you may not be a priority, maybe some of the bigger purchase orders like ones from probably Rockland, <laughs> you might get filled before they fill your, you know, one or two radio order. So, um, <clears throat> so those are about 55. So you could buy about four for $200, uh, obviously a little bit more. If you got them from Rockland and get free shipping, so, okay, you know, definitely, but these I'm imagining are going to be more, more expensive, right? And what is the difference between the two? Well, someone that likes Laura 
mesh radio is fantastic. It's probably more the person that's willing to go through a little bit of learning curve to learn how to use them, maybe do some tweaks. And I know, like I said, I mentioned the TECO, pretty easy, user friendly, kind of off the shelf, ready to go. Um, but some of the other devices require, you know, more of that hobbyist, that maker, that person that likes to mess around with things. So if you're that type of person, you're probably going to buy a lower mesh device instead. Um, will you get the same capabilities as this Gotenna? I don't know, because I don't have one to kind of prove out some of their claims. Some of their claims are pretty cool. If you're an individual or group that's won something that is, you know, comes out of the box, you hand it to friends, family, team members, whatever, and you have a warranty, you have customer support, you know, customer service, you know, people you can call if you have issues. Um, that's probably going to be the people that buy the Gotenas or obviously professional agencies like, you know, government or private, whatever that are, that, you know, definitely don't want to deal with dealing with a, um, you know, device that they have to mess around with and whatnot. So these definitely offer some more capabilities. Are they exactly the same? They're not, they're, they're using mesh, but mesh and mesh tastic are not synonymous. We'll keep saying that here at Imcom Solutions because there seems to be some uh, in the community that the moment they hear mesh, they think everything is mesh-tastic and anything else is, you know, people stealing or something. I don't know. So anyways, I won't get off on my tangent there. I appreciate you guys all watching. I would like to know what kind of feedback you have, what questions you have, because if I do get a call in with um, Gotenna, I'll definitely ask them questions if you guys have some ones that weren't covered here in the video or I can't find in the material. Uh, cost, obviously, is one of those. If you know the cost, you can put that comment down below. You can check out our social media links, which are down below. And you can stay connected by subscribing to the channel and staying tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching.